This is Satya Samaretti. In this video, I'm going to talk about working principle in lead acid batteries, particularly uh, during the discharge process. And also at the end, I will also uh, tell you about the how a charging process also happens. So let us look at this. Uh, this is the uh, lead acid uh, battery uh, pack. It's a 12 volt pack. So before going into that, uh, why we need lead acid battery in the uh, particularly particularly in the uh, transportation uh, vehicles so like a two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler or even uh, heavy duty vehicles also we can see uh, most of the people are using lead acid batteries only and it is advised to use it or the es people have been using in industry is suggesting to use lead acid battery only because Lead acid batteries is not a moisture sensitive battery. So, because inside the, the electrolyte inside uh, battery is the dilute sulfuric acid, which is based on the water, water and acid. It's not sensitive at all it's compared to other batteries. And also, moreover, uh, it gives the cell voltage of each cell gives the voltage of 2 volt among all aqueous batteries. So, you can have a higher voltage demand. For this, definitely we will get it because other, other aqueous beds we cannot use it. And why we need battery in a vehicle? That's also important because the purpose of a battery in a vehicle is for self start and lighting, giving a lighting to the vehicle and uh, engine ignition also. These are three major reasons why we need a battery for any kind of vehicle. Let us take an example of a 12 volt battery. Here it is, you can see the, the 12 volt battery here uh, you can see here uh, this is the battery pack uh, it's a 12 volt so inside inside this what is there no one knows it right mostly what's happening so let us look at this open it you will see six cells these are six individual cells this is a pack inside it, six individual cells are there so from a to b a is negative terminal to b terminal all six are connected in series series fashion and each cell each cell consists of two volts it gives the provides the two volts so since it is in series so total going to be six into two 12 volt six cells individual cells and each one is two volt so how they are existing fitting inside the battery right so in, if you open the cap you will see six compartments individual compartments there is no communication only communication is uh, through cable electrical cable like in series from on the top like here you can see yeah this is one type of module pack this is another type so both are same this is filled already uh as the single cells are existing inside yeah this is all six are in uh, uh, one direction and uh, these three are in one di uh, one side and another three are another side but all six are separated individually so no connection since uh, yeah another important background i want to tell you is let us take an example of uh, one of the cell what's happening inside uh, each cell so because if you see one all, uh, everything is same you know, for all cells also right so i'm taking an example of one cell i'm taking this collaborating so this is the typical uh, diagram we see usually in the textbooks but it's hard to imagine right how it is really working inside it so that's what i my purpose is to tell you uh, how practically we can see visualize and imagine it, what's happening inside the battery so that's the purpose of uh, this uh, video so here you can see uh, the electrolyte is the uh, sulfuric acid and the water one is to three resin it's called as a dilute sulfuric acid this uh, dilute sulfuric acid uh, in which uh, each cell is being immersed that's why each compartment has separated by other compartments inside uh, inside each compartment uh, dilute sulfuric acid existed and inside which these all three sorry six cells are individually fixed so uh, let us look into the practical perspective how you can understand it what's happening inside a single cell single cell uh, in detail i will tell you in the next slide yeah this is the this is the how a single cell consists of uh, in each compartment uh, it consists of uh, 
uh, anode and cathode. And anode is a lead material, lead material is the anode, and uh, cathode uh, having the lead oxide material. Both are lead based, but one is metal, another one is lead, lead dioxide, it's a four plus state. So at anode, oxidation takes place usually, at cathode, reduction takes place usually during the discharge process because this is a discharge process. And the electrolyte is the HDL support. Three more components, main components of this lead acid is lead as anode, lead oxide as cathode material, and electrolyte. These three are the main important things. Without this, nothing. These are the three. So let us look at the anode. What's happening? Right? Lead is being converted into lead sulfate in presence of sulfate ions inside the electrolyte. It gives the two electrons. So it means that lead, lead in zero oxidation state here, zero oxidation state, converting uh, to lead sulfate in plus two oxidation state, lead in plus two in product side. What it means is yeah, oxidation, release of electrons or uh, zero to two, uh, two plus state of lead is also oxidation. Right? And the potential at this half cell is developed is minus 0 0.36 volt standard potential, reduction potential at anode. It's called as off-cell reaction. This is called as off-cell reaction. In the similar way, cathode also having an off-cell reaction. Here one off-cell, here one off-cell called as a total cell reaction. That's a single cell. Just I will tell you in the next uh, next few minutes. Uh, so once uh, the, the electrons are generated at the anode, the electrons are passing through the external circuit. Since electrons cannot pass through the electrolyte, ions only can flow. H plus ions are uh, sulfuric ions, sulfate ions are passing through, but electron cannot move from here to this. Point. So electrons, the generator electrons are passing through uh, anode uh, external circuit from anode to cathode side. So while reaching the cathode side, where lead oxide is the uh, material uh, which is being converted into uh, lead sulfate again, it's in presence of uh, protons and sulfate ions already uh, existing inside the electrolyte solution. So let us see the reaction here at cathode. Lead dioxide is converted into lead sulfate. Lead oxide in plus four state and lead sulfate in plus two state. Plus four to plus two, what is it? Reduction. So at cathode, reduction takes place at anode, oxidation takes place. And the redox potential is the 1.69 volt for this half cell reaction. This is half cell reaction, cathode half cell reaction. This is the anode half cell reaction. So here you, you have you observed one important uh, feature. Uh, both sides, the products are lead sulfate only. Keep it in mind. <laughs> both sides lead sulfate only. But this is anode uh, metal is converting into lead sulfate. Uh, and cathode lead dioxide connecting to lead sulfate. That's the difference in, in, in these two reactions. Uh, so here, uh, when electrons are passed from this uh, here to here, cathode side, anode to cathode, this is the flow of electrons, where if you uh, place any uh, electrical appliances, uh, it's bulb or vehicle for char charging, uh, anything, if you give this uh, for lighting, so obviously uh, the power supply will be given by the, this direct current. This is what, what developed on in this lead acid battery at anode is the direct current. So uh, let us see the total reaction. Uh, what is the net reaction here? Uh, so just combine these reactions, uh, anode half cell and cathode half cell, these two. So lead plus lead dioxide plus 4H plus and sulfate ions and two electrons, two electrons are cancelled and you will get the lead sulfate and then two lead sulfate. Uh, this is stoichiometric uh, ratio. Here you can see what it is balanced with this and 2 h 2 And here H plus and SO4, obviously it, it, it becomes HDS4. It will stay inside the uh, electrolyte solution. And the overall cell voltage is the 2.05. Yeah, almost it is two, we can say. So nearly two, uh, so the cell voltage. So, this is the net reaction completely. Now, I hope you understand it, how the discharge uh, process uh, takes place inside a lead acid battery. As long as lead is inside the solution, uh, the lead keeps on converting into lead sulfate. 
completely. Once the total lead, lead, uh, lead is exposed to the electrolyte is completely converted into lead sulfate, there is no more discharge. It, the battery will stop. So, so before going to the battery discharge, we should not completely discharge it. Okay. We need some, some amount of sulfuric acid, or sulfate uh, ions or H plus ions for the charging process. Yeah, this is the uh, charging mechanism. Uh, uh, in this charging mechanism, in this charging stage, we end up with uh, uh, two states, right? In absolute, one, one in anode side, lead sulfate as a product, as we have seen in the discharge process, and at cathode side also, product is the lead sulfate, right? So uh, here, uh, the reaction is reversed to the reverse to the discharge process. All reactions are reversed, all offset reactions. Uh, so now electrons will flow from cathode to anode. At cathode, oxidation takes place, and anode reduction will take place, right? like vice versa to the uh, discharge process. Let us see here. It starts with the air while charging. When you connect a power supply, plug into the power supply, so the charging will happen to the acid battery, lead acid battery. Charging starts at this time. Uh, the buyer, the flood bias will uh, try to convert the lead sulfate into lead oxide, the electron. So where where we develop the uh, electrons and the electrons are uh, passing through the external circuit towards this. Uh, the reaction starts while charging, uh, and here again back to uh, lead takes place from lead sulfate to lead. That's what reaction uh, happening. The reverse of. So I'm not showing uh, complete reactions again. Uh, after reactions, this is the final net reaction. Is this uh, two lead sulfate? Lead sulfate. This is stoichiometric uh, balanced reaction. Lead sulfate from cathode. Uh, one and a lead sulfate from anode, another another mole, two moles, and two H two O, but it requires some sulfuric acid. See, some sulfate ions required. Due to that, we don't want let the battery discharge completely. If it completely discharge, uh, all sulfate ions or H plus ions will be consumed. So we need some some amount of H plus or sulfate ions inside the solution before completely discharging, so that it will enhance this charging process. So small amount of H plus and sulfate ions required to enhance this uh, reaction and start the reaction during the charging process. Yeah. So overall, the products will back to the uh, uh, before going to discharge state, like uh, lead on the, the original state, lead on the anode set and uh, uh, lead oxide on the cathode set. Now, after complete uh, charging process, all lead sulfate converting into uh, lead oxide, lead on respective electrodes. Then it is ready to discharge again. The process being, will get re repeated, right? So uh, this is the this is what I am going to talk in this. Uh, yeah. So in this, uh, just I want to tell you one thing is uh, lead. Lead is a solid material. Yeah, in this color, same almost uh, this color. And lead oxide is the um, uh, brown color, little like light brown color in this way. Both are solids only. So when uh, and also lead sulfate is forming, right? Lead sulfate of white color solid. In during discharge process also, when uh, lead is converted into lead sulfate on the anode side, lead sulfate white color layer is being formed. In the same way, cathode side also, when uh, discharging process happens, the lead oxide dioxide converting into lead sulfate same on the cathode side also white color layer happens. Whenever you open the discharged battery. What happens is uh, you will see white color on both anode and cathode side. That's, that's due to the lead sulfate of white color in nature. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, so thank you.